is, is finite, is temporal, is like um, prone to like illness and um, no, not illness maybe, um, but prone to like um, harm and suffering. But in divine science, it's, it's like um, eternal, unchanging. Um, I understand that, but I think that's where the contradiction lies because okay. if you're saying there's one center of consciousness, and that center yeah. of consciousness is Jesus Christ. That sense of consciousness is both limited and unlimited at the same time. It's human and fundamentally unhuman at the same time. That's what I'm saying. This is where the contradiction lies. What do you mean by consciousness though? Like, one awareness here with these two natures that are different. How would that be a contradiction actually? What, would be logical? what I'm saying is that if you look at the attributes, if you look at the attributes of, for example, God, yeah. what are the attributes of God? Eternity, um, all powerfulness, um, creation, being uncreated, SAT, people on the line here. Yeah. All right, so. Now, what I'm saying is, if we talk about Jesus Christ, you're saying he has a human side and he has a God side, yeah? Human nature, and, human nature and God nature, fine, divine nature. I'm saying, so this Jesus is one center of consciousness, one person, okay? Jesus is one person, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, Jesus, the one person, is both human and God. Yeah, chief man, chief God. Yeah, yeah, all right. Now, I'm saying, when you're saying he's human, that means to say he's, he's created. Yeah. He's created. He's limited, he's not omnipotent, he's not omniscient, he doesn't have all knowledge, he does not have all power, correct? But at the same time, he does have all power because he has a godly side. This is for me, this, it's the same as someone saying to me that someone is a tall, short man or that there's a square, circle square. That would only be an issue if there were like a square, a square circle is more so like um, the square and circle at the same time in the same way. We're yes, that's what we're saying about Jesus. We're not saying that about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He's, he's not God and man yet in the same way. Rather, they refer to things, um, to things like natures of him. The, 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 the natures are like that, but they're expressing a single person now. I, you kind of get what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, but that's what, what, that's what I'm saying is the contradiction. So, 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 I mean, I mean, the thing is though, like, I, I feel like when, when, when you use the analogy of the like, um, square circle as tall short man... It's not an analogy, it's just a... I mean, I mean the example, right? Um, yeah. like, that doesn't really apply because in that case, right, um, that person is like those two things at the same time in the same way. Yeah, so... Okay. Jesus isn't the same, same, those two things in the same time in the same way. Okay, Jesus... So same time, but not in the same way. Okay, listen. You said the same time, but not in the same way, alright? Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. okay? Is there any point where he doesn't exhibit either the human uh, nature or the divine nature? Uh, it would be impossible for him that's his nature. Like, it's like he right. Have to exhibit non -human so he exhibits both at yeah. all times? Okay. So the, 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 therefore, the, the conditions of contradiction apply. There are conditions for contradiction to apply, right? If uh, these conditions are that there are eight conditions, uh, for example, in some logicians mentioned. But one of them is that if they're in the same place in the same time and they're opposite things, it's a contradiction. For example, if I say there's a tall man and a short man. If I'm tall today, I'm six foot six, okay? But when I was six years old, I was maybe like, I don't know, three foot tall or something. I don't, I don't know how tall they are, yeah? So I was short comparatively to how tall I am now when I was six. So I was the same person, let's say, two different heights. There's no difference of opinion here. There's no, there's no contradiction here. But if I say, look, I'm tall and short at the same time with that caveat at the same, so I'm tall, I'm six foot six, but I'm three foot tall, both at the same time, therein lies the contradiction. I'm saying with, with Jesus, if you're saying that he's all powerful and he's limited and that he's all knowledgeable, but he has limited knowledge, both at the same time. In other words, if he exhibits both the human nature and uh, or if he possesses both the human nature and the divine nature in his one center of consciousness, then that's where the contradiction lies. Yeah, so the way we resolve that is by, by, by so the last way yeah, was developed in our Say again? Um, the lot of ways that we can reconcile that. Um, okay, so go ahead. Like, um, the best way is like, um, we say that Christ has two wills, first of all. Sorry? We say that Christ has two wills. We say that Christ has two minds. God has two wills? Yeah. No, no, Christ, Christ, has. Christ has two wills and two okay. minds, right? Okay. And so that can explain the difference there. Because if he had one mind that knew from the okay, that wouldn't make any sense. But he has two minds, right? And, 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 and he has two wills, right? In one will, right? He can do anything. In another will, he is dependent and weak. You're saying Christ has two wills? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's new to me that you're saying that. That's really, interesting. That's, that's like, um, I think, I think uh, the heresy okay. that one will is called a coronarism. Okay, no problem. Let's go with it, that, yeah? The two wills. Which one is superior to which? Uh, the divine, of course. So, now if I ask you a question, right? If, you, if Christ has two wills, and Christ is part of the Trinity, 
So are there four wills in the Trinity? Oh, no, because the human nature isn't a part of the Trinity. It's not part of the Trinity. Remember, okay. Remember, we see it's called a okay. hypostatic union. A hypostatic union. Okay. It's a hypostatic union. Okay. All right. So it's Jesus. Not an issue for Oriental philosophy. Great. So Jesus is part of the Trinity. Yeah. But the divine Jesus is part of the Trinity, not the human Jesus. Yes. Yet, yeah. the human Jesus and the divine Jesus are inextricably linked. Uh, unified, yeah. How does that make sense? What do you mean? How does not Let me explain that again. You're saying, or you've said, that you, the, the, the figure of Jesus Christ has two wills. Yeah. You have the divine will, and then you have the human will. Jesus is part of the Trinity. Yeah. There is one center of consciousness called Jesus Christ. Yeah. It possesses two wills. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is, if that is the case and they're inextricably linked, then is there not four wills to the Trinity? If Jesus, oh, right. uh, if Jesus, Jesus has one will, this one will Trinity, no you've just said that will. Jesus has two wills. Yeah, but the, 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 the will of the divine side is the, is the will of the Trinity. That's the Trinity's one will. That's the divine side has that one will. So is the human side irrelevant? In what sense? In in the construction of the uh, personhood of Jesus Christ. Uh, well, relevant. I mean, before before he became unified to that human nature, it was relevant. That's relevant now. Now he's unified. I don't, I don't know what you mean by irrelevant. Okay. Like he can he can exist without it. Yeah, if you mean by that. If Jesus Christ became unified with a human nature, then the fundamental nature of the Trinity which is that you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yeah. that must have changed. If the Son now has okay. two different natures. Okay, 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 your point now, yeah. Um, so again, I think, I think you're confusing, like, you think of a, a, a mixture, remember? It's a union. They don't intermingle with each other. They, 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 they're things to another year, but they're unified. Into okay, one but the that. figure of Jesus Christ is part yeah. of the Trinity. Uh, the divine nature is part of the Trinity, yeah. Not a human nature. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, if the divine nature is part of the, human, uh, the Trinity, yeah. Jesus is part of the Trinity. Yeah. Is there a connection between the divine nature of Jesus Christ and the human nature of Jesus Christ? There is. Like, like what is that connection? It's more of a union, like they're, 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 they're right, together. Right. So now they're... they're mixed, yeah. I understand, they're not mixed, but now they're inextricably linked. Yes. Right. So this... Yeah. So, the fundamental nature of what it means to be Jesus Christ has changed pre post incarnation. What it means to be the son? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Again. So there was no difference. There's no change. Uh, no, there's no change actually. No, because remember okay. it's a union. Um, so basically, it's, kind of, it's not like. Um, okay. He, he had, along his divine nature, right, his divine self, right. He had a human nature attached to it now. Yeah. That was okay. To him, but like, so that is that is that is that attachment a change or is that not a change? Oh no, we don't consider that change. No, so what is it then? Um, it's a union, we call it a union, that's what it is. Okay, and is that union, is that indicative of change or not change? Well, it depends on how you do the word change, because I remember, I think, I think we're kind of quick in the word change. Is it a transformation? I mean, no, it's not. So what is but, it? But no, my point, I want to explain what, uh, you, uh, the word change, right? Um, you can change your clothes, right? You can change your clothes, right? Sometimes, yeah. You can change your mind, right? Yep. Um, and less fair, than fair enough. Right? Yeah, 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 you yeah, powers, right? You could take yeah. like the um, you know, like guy next to me. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm with you. That, it's, this all changes, right? But fine. not in the same way. Fine, fine. So uh, like, let, in, let me. In, let, you can use the word change. Yeah, fine, fine. Let's, let's be more specific. Not in the um, X Men way. Fair enough. That's yeah. good. That's uh, so now you're being more specific. Like, what do we mean by change? Yeah, yeah. No, so, no philosophers now. Yeah. Okay. Is there a change in the whoness of Jesus Christ? Uh, no, actually, still one who, still one who. Okay, so when Jesus Christ, if you pointed at the human Jesus as he was alive, yeah. being uh, crucified on the, on the cross, saying, uh, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, yeah. Yeah? God, God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. Would I be pointing at Jesus or would I be pointing at some, someone else? You'd be pointing at a person. And, and would I be pointing at Jesus Christ or someone else? Uh, well, there is no someone else. There's only one person there. So you'd be pointing at Jesus Christ. So I would be pointing at Jesus Christ? Yeah. So that Je if that Jesus Christ that I'm pointing at, if I had pointed to so this Jesus Christ is now part of the divine nature, is in union with the divine nature yeah, of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. However, he wasn't part of that divine nature in the past. No, he wasn't. He exists. Okay. So, there, so what would you call the fact that if I were to point at the human being of Jesus Christ, at one point I would be po pointing at Jesus Christ, and that if I didn't in the past, I would not be pointing at what would you call that kind oh, of no, thing? No, no, no. Remember, there's only one person. He didn't become a new person, a different person. I understand, but, but you've said that he's taken a human so, form, right? So when you say Jesus, right? That's the who there. That's the person. That's the person. Yeah, yeah. So before and after, it's still be Jesus. It's still be the same person. It's still be the human Jesus. Yeah. Is that part of the who-ness of Jesus Christ? 
Uh, no, that, remember, that, that's nature, that, that's the what. That's the no, the human, if I were the to point... It's the, the word, it's well, when the I say the word. If I say the who here, I'm talking about, if I point at him, if I point at Jesus Christ, <laughs> but whilst he's being crucified on the cross, according yeah. to you, yeah, we don't believe, but we say crucified on the cross, am I pointing at a person? Yes, yes. Yes, and who am I pointing at? The word, the Son of God. Jesus Christ? Yeah. Okay. Now, that Jesus Christ, what age was he when he was being uh, crucified? The loss of the base, let's say, right, three, let's, three. No problem, whatever you say, 33, yeah? So, 34 years before that, if I were to point at that cross or anywhere in the world, I would not be pointing at the human Jesus Christ because he would not be born, correct? Um, you, he, he wasn't called Jesus Christ yet, but he should be the word. Be the same no, person. no, but the human Jesus Christ yeah. was not born 34 years before that in the moment. I mean, I think of it this way, like, um, let's, let's say you wear, you go to work, right, you wear a policeman costume, right? And I say, you're a policeman, right? But only you was a policeman. Does that mean you changed or just like... Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah change it in that sense. In that sense, yeah, I agree, in that sense, yeah. Okay. But you're not changing as in, like, you become a different person. Or I'm saying that 33 years before... Years. Yeah, 35 years, let's go 50 years, uh, before the cru alleged crucifixion, if G was the human Jesus Christ on the earth or not? Okay, so 50 years before the crucifixion, he wasn't on the earth. No. Then he became on the earth. Yeah. What do you cons what do you what do you call this uh, before and after? What do you call it? Uh, incarnation. Incarnation. And what does the incarnation signify? Was there a turning point? Did it signify some turning point or not? It signified the union between a, a created human nature to the by nature and it was expressing the one hypothesis of Christ. Right, I understand. Yeah. And that change that took place before yeah, and after. It wasn't a fundamental change, it wasn't an eternal change, it wasn't a nature change. But more so like um, this way, this more so like an Composi Compositional change? Um, yeah, compositional change, yeah. Like oh, expression. fantastic. No, okay. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now we're getting into like kind of early church psychology, but um, to, make, to make a simple expression, we can, we can express differently. We can, in, in, well, it's more early, early expressed solely by a divine nature. No, but after, it, after the incarnation, we can be expressed through a human and divine it's, nature. It's not just expression. Yeah. Because if I were to point at the Jesus Christ, thirty-five years after that point, or when he was on the cross, to say, if I were to point at him. I'd be pointing at, if I say, who's that? Would that be an unintelligible proposition? If there was someone on the cross, yeah. I'd say, who's that? I mean, and the if, word of God, Jesus Christ. Yeah, great. So you, you, yeah. you would answer it? Yeah. Good. So the who-ness of Jesus can be expressed in a different way. Define who-ness. When you say who, right, you're talking about the person or the nature. Who? Because the who, the, the person didn't change. The person was saying before and after. That's what I'm saying. The that, that's what, no, what I'm saying here yeah. is that, no, no, no. I'm talking about the person. I am actually talking. Oh yeah, about. so yeah, same. Before he just called. No, well, here's what I'm saying. That's why I'm. That's why I'm debating with you right yeah, now. Yeah. Because I'm saying that if I were to say, if the Jesus Christ was there, and I were to point at him and I say, "Who's that?" Yeah. Well, someone says, "Who's that?" And he pointed at him, and he was alive, walking on the earth. I'm saying, is that a, is that an unintelligible proposition question, or is it an intelligible question? It's an intelligible question. Yeah. It's an intelligible question. Yeah. And can it be answered? Of course, yeah. Yes. Now, would that answer be the same when he was alive? Versus when, before he was born, or would it be different? Um, I guess, would it, would it, would it, like, if I met Jesus Christ in the Testament, right, like, um, as like a figure in the, like, into the Lord. Do you understand my question? I think so, yeah. Okay, let me, let, me, let me put it in a different way for you. Jesus, I mean, I let me, could, I'll, give I'll, me a second. Jesus Christ walking about in the, in the earth, yeah? The human nature of Jesus Christ is being expressed. Yeah. You'd, ex you'd, ex you'd accept that it's the human nature, yeah? Someone at his time points at him and says, who's that? Yeah. That's an intelligible question. Yeah. Okay. And so if someone replies to that question, that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. 35 years before that, so before he was born, that question, who's that, would be unintelligible because there would be nothing to point at, correct or not? What do you mean nothing to point at? There's no human manifestation of Jesus Christ 35 years before the crucifixion. I mean, you'd be pointing at God then. You'd be pointing at him. No, you wouldn't be pointing at anybody. If I, if I, if I... Exist, exist. No, no, now you're confusing yourself. Because if I said to you, look, just, just let's be fair and real, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ walked the earth. I mean, no, you said, you said he would, nothing there. What do you mean by Listen. that? Listen. Because he existed before he was born. Jesus Christ walked the earth. Yeah. Yes? Okay. If he was walking around in Bethlehem, in Jerusalem, wherever he walked, ascending, coming down, yeah. honeycomb, uh, broiled fish, 
on the cross where you believe, whatever. Someone said to him, who's that? You are there, let's pretend we take you in a time machine. You say, who's that? First of all, does that question make sense? Yes, it does make sense. Now, if someone replied, that's Jesus Christ, would that be the correct answer? Yes, it would be the correct answer. Now, 50 years before that point, where Jesus did not, was not born in the, in the, in the stable, yeah, and the, the three wise men didn't come to him and all that stuff, before that situation happened, according to you, if someone were to point anywhere on the earth, or in the universe, in fact, and try and find this Jesus Christ, they would not be yeah. able to find him. No, they wouldn't. Right, so the question, who's that, if they were to point anywhere in the universe, they would not be able to, they would be unintelligible. Correct? Yeah. All right, so, so now we have, uh, we have a difference in who-ness before and after the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes, because it's, we've, just ex we've just explained how it's the difference in who-ness. Because before his birth, you could point at him and say, that's Jesus. After his birth, sorry, after his birth, he could do that. Before his birth, he couldn't do that. So of course there's a difference. Because he wasn't incarnate yet, he wasn't incarnate, that's why. That's what I'm saying. That's what, the point is, is that I'm saying the, incarn the doctrine of the incarnation has brought about a logical fallacy, a contradiction which cannot be re reconciled by the so, human so, mind. So, so because the, uh, before he was incarnate, I couldn't find him anywhere, how does that lead to a logical I'm saying that the hypostatic union yeah. or, the, or the doctrine of the incarnation, yeah. which uh, many church fathers base on the first uh, chapter and the first verse of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, yeah. and so on. Yeah, yeah. And the Word became flesh. Okay, listen. Yeah. So, the, the, so the doctrine of the Incarnation and the idea of the hypostatic union, one must admit that there is a fundamental change, not just in the expression of God's attributes, but in the who-ness of God Himself. Or in fact, let me put it in this way, because I'm using the word God, but I should be using the word Jesus. But of course, you'd be using it interchangeably. Sure. I say, look, Jesus Christ, before and after the hypostatic union, were two different. Um, you could be, you could express the whoness in two different ways. So if I were to, if I were to point, if I there is, there is nothing, no, no, I'm saying who, I'm saying define uh, who, define who, who, ref, okay, is that who, like person yes, or? person. What well, the difference okay. between who and what in the English language or any language? Well, yeah, I'm using more in the traditional sense. Okay, well, the, well, fine. Sense, yeah. In the English language, any language, what is inanimate? Yeah, you see. Okay, and and who is animate or personal, who, right? Yeah. So you say we don't say what is that and point at a human being, yeah. unless you want to become racist, or, or rude, you yeah. know, or rude. <laughs> you know, we don't say this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So, if I'm saying now, yeah, but my, my when we the, when we look at Jesus Christ, the human, yes, which you agree has a human side. Yeah. When he was on, according to you, he's on the cross. Yeah, it's Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, God, God, why have you forsaken me? If someone points and says, who's that? That question will be intelligible propositionally. But if before that time... It will make, like, like, it'll make sense, this question. Yes, the question makes sense. That's what I'm saying right now. The can question you, makes sense. Can you now say, um, where is God? Can you say that right now? Can yeah, I ask you, is that a simple question? Can yeah, say, yeah where, is God? where is God is not the same as who is God. As that's what oh. we're, we're in two different things, you're not understanding. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Where is God is different to who is God. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm saying to you that your problem is not in where is Jesus, your problem is who is Jesus. Oh, same people you, and what I'm saying is that before the hypostatic union, your answer to the question of who is Jesus has fundamentally changed. And oh, if you, okay. okay. Yeah. So before the hypostatic union, before the incarnation, you must maintain that the question who is Jesus has, is, has two different answers. Before, you're saying that it was just the divine essence. After, it's the divine essence and the human essence. Okay. Correct or incorrect? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Correct. Now, now so you're, so you're, now we're in a problem. Uh, again, but now, you're, now, you're, now your God has changed. Now it's a problem. Because your God has now a human element, has anthropomorphized, has humanized. You understand the problem here? So, and the, the, the contradiction lies in the following. How can God change on a, on a level which causes impossibility. It's not just any level. It's the fact that God is changing and he has two sets of attributes which are contradictory with one another. On the one hand, he's all powerful. On the, on the other hand, he's limited. He can be whipped and spat at and, you know, go to the toilet and don't know where the fig trees and all that. So it doesn't make sense. That's why it's, 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 it's an affront to common sense. It's, it's, that's why it is, it's, uh, it's obscene to it's obscene to the logical process. 
Okay, yeah. I okay. must say this. I'm going to get your point now, yeah. Um, so, go back to the whole Hoonus, right? The Hoonus before and after it changed, right? Yes. I, I mean, I tell back. Um, the Hoonus before and after was the same. The same Hoonus No, it wasn't the same. The same. After, yeah. No, it wasn't the same. Um, As I said to you before, now before and after the hypostatic union, the yeah. incarnation, whatever. If you're saying that there was a union between the two natures yeah. of Jesus Christ, yeah. the human nature and the divine nature, before Jesus, before the Word became flesh, yeah. okay, before the hypostatic, before the before anything you want, you can't, you cannot maintain that God had or Jesus had both those natures. So He has a new nature now, new, yeah. N E W, which yeah. means it wasn't there before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means now, if I were to point out Jesus, so who's Jesus? Jesus, the divine one, do you want, or do you want the human one? We have two Jesus now. Oh, uh, no, no, remember, remember, uh, the, the human nature did not instantiate Two natures. All. The human, human nature did not instantiate all, yeah. The of course it did. It, it, it instantiated, it became flesh. It was there in the human no, no, it, walking it around. It didn't instantiate, yeah. it didn't instantiate uh, at all. No, no, Is that no, what you're saying? It instantiated, but not as a hypostasis. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't form another hypostasis, but it was simply expressing the person of Jesus Christ, like the person of the Word of God. The human expression. Mm, yeah was manifest for all to see yeah, yeah. on the cross. Otherwise, the cross means nothing. Otherwise, the crucifixion means nothing. Otherwise, it's all, it's all fiction. Yeah. So you can't say it didn't instantiate at all. It did. Because you believe in the, ascent, the doctrine of the ascension. Yeah, yeah. You believe in the doctrine of the, uh, the crucifixion. You believe in the doctrine of the resurrection. If, so when that was happening and people could see it according to you, yeah. was that a physical instantiation or was that not a physical instantiation? So yeah, so when I say instantiation, right, what I mean though, so so firstly, right, the, the abstract would be the nature, right, and the concrete would be the, would be the person who is there. Um, it didn't concretize into an abstract hypostasis as, as, as an absolute person to Christ. There's still one person there, but now he just had, he just had another expression now. He had a human, had a human expression and a divine expression alongside his, yeah, alongside each other. You're using the word expression to yeah. try and run away from the fact that the who-ness of God, according yeah. to you, the who-ness of Jesus Christ, fundamentally, so look, if Jesus Christ is God, do you believe he's God? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Jesus is God, yes? Yeah. And before and after, this Jesus God, yeah? He now has a new nature, a human yeah. nature, which he didn't have before. So your God changed, correct? Um, and he changed in, in, okay. in, in the X-Men sense. Oh, whatever. He changed in the sense of He, like, he changed in who -ness. He changed now when I say no, no. who... One who, one who, not so oh, is, is, Are you sure about that? It's one who, yeah, one who. Okay, so one who, yeah? Yeah, one who. Yeah. Okay, you said, you said Jesus Christ has two wills. Yes. Okay, two wills, and he has two natures, correct? Yeah. He has what, the human nature? The divine nature. And he has the divine nature? Absolutely, yeah. Is the human nature the same as the divine nature? No. Great. So now Jesus has a human nature, and if I were to point at it, it's intelligible for me to ask who is that, and for Wait, someone to answer, it's Jesus point Christ. Nature, point at the nature. Pardon? Point at the nature, do you see? Point at the nature. Not at the nature, because that's, an, that's a Neoplatonic thing. I'm talking about the, the, the actual Jesus. That, is that a manifestation of person, Jesus? The, person, the, person. the nature of, yes, the yes, person yes, of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. If I were to look at it, when Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew yeah. is walking to the fig tree and he's saying, you know, he doesn't know if it, he's, he's cursing the fig tree because he's, it's out of season, yeah? You know this. You know this person? Of course, yeah. yeah. Fig tree. You know about that, yeah? Okay, if Jesus now is looking at the fig tree because that's That Jesus, if I were to point and say, is that Jesus? Is that Jesus? Would you say, yeah. would you say yes? Yeah. Okay, is that human Jesus? Well, it's Jesus. Is that the human Jesus? Um, is, that, is, that, is that representation of the human nature of Jesus or the divine nature? So, yeah, so exactly. We don't, we don't talk about that, basically. We don't, we, we don't make that distinction. Like, you, know, you don't make a distinction, either? No, 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 because that, that, what, what you're getting into there is just having this historianism. We're not historians. The historians would make that kind of Okay, claim, I'm, yeah. I'm asking you. But, but, I'm asking you. Yeah. I'm not asking the historians. Okay, yeah. yeah? But, I mean, what, we're describing I'm asking, historianism. We're describing historianism. I'm, not, well, I'm asking, I'm not describing historianism. I'm asking you, okay? In your understanding of the hypostatic yeah. union, in your understanding of the incarnation, in your yeah. understanding of the Trinity and Christological process, I'm asking a question. If I were to point at that Jesus, who yeah. am I pointing at? Jesus, the person Jesus. The person. Beautiful. Like, if I'm okay. pointing at you, yeah, I'm pointing at human nature or I'm pointing at Muhammad Ejab. If I'm pointing at you, I'm pointing at your human nature listen, or Muhammad Ejab. I'm saying that your I mean, point, there's same, only... Same, same logic, no, yeah. it's not the same logic. I am saying there's no contradiction between the human nature and Muhammad Hajab. There's yeah. only the human nature with Muhammad Hajab. Yeah. Do you understand? I know some people think I'm a better human. That's a different situation, different story, that's something. But what I'm saying is that you're not, you're, there is no conflict of... What we're saying is that your human nature construct, there's a conflict, direct conflict, 
with the divine nature. You can't be powerful, all powerful and not all powerful at the same time. Do you understand this point? It depends. Not, not in the same way, yeah, but remember, they're, they're, they're essentially differently. So, like, um, so of course, we, we agree that God can't die, right? God can't die, right? In his, human, in his divine Do you believe nature, Jesus right? is one person or two people? Of course, one person. One person? Of course, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, that's the Excellent. Whole time. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ is one person. Yeah. Yet, he, man he has two natures which have contradictory attributes. Do you accept this proposition? Um, yeah, sure. Beautiful. That's all I wanted you. Live with that, please. Live with that, because that's what's going to take you to the hellfire. I'm being honest with you. Because the fact that you can... Uh, that, you, that, you, that will you, take you to the hellfire. No, no, it's not paradoxical. Yeah. You've said it yourself. Yeah. You have just now challenged logic fully. You've said F you to logic. You put the middle finger to logic. If I use the same reasoning that you've just used with theology in architecture or engineering or anything else, Nothing, if, if I said to you, listen, go on a plane. Do you see that plane there? Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it's got that flashing red light? Now, before you go on that plane, I'm going to use your same principles of allow, enduring contradictions in the geometric process. Let's endure it. So when now the architects are putting together, the, uh, let me just finish. When the, when the architects are putting together the, you know, the, the engine for the plane, they'll use contradictory calculations, yeah, and so on. They don't mind that. They're okay with that. Okay, get on that plane, let's see what it does with you. And if you fly the plane and then it's just, there's a crash straight away, I'm going to say you're a fool. Yeah. We've already told you that this is, uh, this is a, a death yeah. trap and I you've gone into it. I think it yeah, no, no, I'm being serious. Genuinely, bro, honestly, I'm, 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 with all due respect, with all due respect, you've accepted. You, no, no, just allow me, allow me. Let me, let me, let me, just, let me just finish the, the train of thought. All I want us to do is be fair and honest, Aki. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good man. I like you. You don't know me. I no, but you, no, you're, you're, coming across, you're coming across as respectful. Thank you. That's okay, and I accept that. I want you to now realize something. If you accept this for yourself, yeah, that you can have a person who you consider to be God with two contradictory set of attributes. Don't you're, make it make it again. Make it you said that on the camera, bro. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, yeah, but, yeah, but like, yeah, yeah. But I, had implied yeah, that's yeah. great distinction though. I don't what think do you it, mean? What do you mean? I mean like you, you you're making it as though there's one category there and these that one category is this and that. No, it's not a category error. Yeah, yeah, that's category error. Well, why? The thing is though, I'm making it because there's a category distinction though. There's distinction of what, categories of, of what? there. There's the human nature and the divine nature. There's I know you categories. I understand that. But what I'm saying is that those two are incompatible. I'm saying you've said it yourself. You said that he's you got the human side and that he's got the godly side. Yeah. I'm saying that will take you to hell. That's yeah. a ticket to the hellfire. Because what I'm, of all due respect, and, I, and this is, I mean, I'm saying you're going to hell, you're going to hell. No, so I, no okay. problem. I'm saying to you, that is a ticket to the hellfire, because now God has t God has made it easy for you. That's why the Quran offers the most simple argumentation ever. Can I kulani ta'am? Him and his mom used to eat food, showing you the human limitation. All I need to show you is that these people cannot be God, because they have human limitations. You've accepted that. Okay, there is a contradiction between the human limitation and the godly attribute. Now that you've accepted that and you're living with that, you want to die with that, yeah? You want to accept that a human being, a Middle Easterner like me, yeah? Is your God that you bow down to, yeah? With human limitation, you yeah. bow down to that. Then, okay, that's, that's where I would say to you, that's fine. You live with that, you die with that. As for me, as for me, I personally believe that there is a God with no attributes similar to human beings in the sense of limitation. No limitation to a God ever. 